Welcome to Kansas. Park, somewhere in the middle of Kansas. I am very pleasantly surprised by this park, I'm not gonna lie. This place was actually recommended by someone in my comments. This place is so beautiful and I am so surprised because I thought Kansas was totally flat, but as soon as I drove into this park, it's all like hilly and beautiful and I have this entire section of the campground all to myself. I did have to pay $5 for parking and $10 for the night. It's not too bad. I do prefer free camping, but I couldn't really find anything feasible for sleeping in my car with no window covers in the middle of Kansas. I'm sure there's some good spots, but I just wanted to feel safe and I have this entire section of the campground to myself, which is so freaking awesome. It's kind of like I am dispersed camping right now. All of this car camping has been really great practice for when I move into my van, which is less than a week from today. And by the time I post this video, it's already gonna be happening. So make sure you go check my buy me a coffee page and my Instagram. I might already have photos posted by the time this video is posted. And try not to be mad at me that this video isn't about my van. I'm actually here because a few of you have asked me about my car camping setup and so I've been sending you my video from Pinnacles National Park which was my very first time ever car camping. I went all out, I got all the stuff and things but as I'm watching it I'm like oh it's young YouTube Sarah like I'm not I'm not the same so I wanted to <laughs> give you guys an updated video. And there are a few changes that I've made. I've become much more relaxed as far as privacy goes. Um, I ditched the window covers when I got the Airstream because I was like, when am I ever gonna car camp again? And then I ended up car camping a bunch in Washington. But it hasn't been any issue not having the window covers because I got my windows tinted. It's not easy to see into the car, so I feel fine when I'm dispersed camping. Um, I'm really lucky today because no one else is around, but it's also really nice in the middle of the night when I wake up because I do tend to wake up a few times. I get to see the stars from where I'm sleeping and I really enjoy that. So no window covers anymore. Another change I made from that previous video is I also don't have a curtain in the front anymore separating the front from the back. I ditched that as well when I got the Airstream and now I just I don't care as much like I don't know <laughs> but of course it depends on where I'm camping and if I'm like in a parking lot obviously I want the curtain and window covers but I've been dispersed camping and privacy hasn't really been an issue for the way that I've been camping. I also have my dog with me this time. The first night we camped in Joshua Tree I cleared out the front passenger seat for her and I had her sleep up there that way she could one, be my guard dog, and two, we could have our own separate sleeping spaces because we've never been cuddlers and this is already like a pretty small space as it is. And then there was one night that we were camping on a forest road in Colorado and the temperature dropped below freezing. It actually started snowing that night and Rue crawled into the back and cuddled with me. It was it was such a rare occasion and she honestly took up like three quarters of the bed, but I didn't even care. It was adorable. I have yet to decide what we're going to do tonight. I'm currently traveling with everything I own, my dog, and a mattress in the back in order to be able to sleep. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull it off, but I did. And some of you seemed impressed 
I'm impressed with myself as well. So I'm gonna tell you how I did it. And the reason I'm not going to be posting this video until after I move out of my car is because I'm going to disclose the location of all of my belongings. And I would hate for the world to know where they could find my most valuable things. So the biggest reason I'm able to store all of my things in here and still have sleeping space for me and my dog is because I mounted my spare tire on my roof rack. And that's actually what I originally purchased this roof rack for when my ex and I were moving from Florida to California. We did the same exact thing. Well, we didn't sleep in the car, but we packed this thing full of everything we own, mounted the tire on top, and it creates a giant space for storage underneath where I'm sitting. So that is where I am keeping everything precious to me. I was able to put so many things in there. And another hack that I've been using is I packed all of my clothes in these like rectangular bags with two handles on the side. I keep them back here when I'm driving and when I set up camp, I take them and I put them in the front seat. It creates so much space in here. All of my clothing stays folded. I mean, it's probably all wrinkly, but I'm about to move in a van, so what do I care? And it just stays in the front seat. The only downside to that is if I had a sketchy situation occur and then I have to jump in the driver's seat and drive off, it's kind of hindering my ability to do that. There was one morning I woke up in Colorado and I opened the side door and my car alarm started going off and I had to climb into the front seat to try and start the car and make the alarm go off and I'm still half asleep. I'm hitting all the panic buttons on my keys and the alarm just keeps getting louder and louder and there's other cars like people camping close to me. It was like six in the morning and I felt terrible. <laughs> But if those bags weren't in my front seat, I would be able to easily climb up there, start the car real quick, and get the alarm to turn off. So that's the only downside to keeping my clothes up front while I'm sleeping. But I have to do what I have to do. There's nowhere else to put them. And that's pretty much how I fit everything I own in my car, and I'm still able to sleep in it. Even with the bags back here while I'm driving, Rue still has a space to sit right up where my pillow is and she just sleeps and chills there when we are on our long drives every day. Another way I was able to fit everything in here is just staying super organized. I will say the spare tire space isn't that organized. It was kind of like a major Tetris situation but when I move into the van I plan to kind of have like the Jeep and the van right next to each other so it should be pretty easy to just walk back and forth and find places for things as I go. I also bought a regular like trunk car organizer. It's been really nice to keep all of my camping gear in that I need easy access to like my electric pedal, my cooking utensils, my mug and those sorts of things. It also has some nice side pockets on it so that when I'm sleeping at night, I have a place to put my phone and a flashlight and some other things that I might need easy access to without fumbling and searching to see where they are. They're just right next to me and I can grab them. That being said, I do keep personal protection items very close to me at night, some in those pockets and some in the little pocket to the side door. Other things that I keep next to my bed are this 1500 watt anchor power station that I talked about in my last video. It's been really nice to run my heated blanket at night on a cold night and between that and Rue cuddling with me now, I stay super toasty, like almost too toasty, but that's better than freezing your butt off, right? I also use it to cook my breakfast and make my coffee in the morning and charge all of my devices. Like I mentioned, it comes with this charging cord and it just plugs in right there while I'm driving so I don't have to move a thing. This is <laughs> my suitcase that I packed for the conference that I went to in Phoenix. I thought that I would change the clothes out eventually, but I didn't. And it's funny because they're all like warm weather summer clothes. And I just left Denver where it was literally snowing while I was at a concert at Red Rocks. So luckily with those bags, they're clear on top. So I was able to easily go 
and <laughs> find my snow pants. Because yes, I wore my waterproof snow pants to this concert. I also wore these waterproof hiking shoes, a puffy, and a rain jacket. I stayed toasty warm. There were many people that actually left because they were freezing, so... Me and my friends stayed super warm and dry during this concert and we still had a blast. But yeah, I've still been mainly living out of this suitcase and I was able to do laundry when I stayed at a friend's in Flagstaff. So I haven't had to pay for any laundry. I have only paid for one hotel the entire trip so far, which has been really awesome. Like technically I've been living rent free for about a week. This bin right here has lots of different miscellaneous camping gear. It has, I have to look to see what's in it. Sriracha, thank you, Mike. <laughs> okay, we've got a hiking backpack, a climbing helmet, a blender, um, protein bars, a hammock, a shovel, and all of my tools and my air compressor if my tires need inflating. Ugh! Jeez, that is a heavy, heavy suitcase. Okay, and then the suitcase underneath my organizer has all of my kitchen stuff that I'm going to be using in the van, so I haven't had to touch that. It's just stayed at the bottom. And then in front of that, I have clean socks and underwear in case I need to grab any. I also have lots of different shoes kind of just like shoved under the seat, pieced together. And I have all of my toiletries right there. In the front, the front seat is a hot mess right now. I don't even know if I want to show you guys. It has Rue's food bin, kind of like strapped in with the seat belt. It has my backpack with my laptop and notebooks. I also have my food up there. I just went to a grocery store in the middle of nowhere. It didn't have too many options, so I got some fruit and some frozen PB&J for dinner, which was delicious. I also have a bear canister up there with my food in it, um, mainly because when I was camping in Colorado, I was feeling a bit skeptical about the bear situation. I actually would love your guys' advice on RV life and van life while you're camping in bear country. I feel like I get different answers from everyone about what they do and how they feel about it. But for this time around, while I'm in a car, I decided to get a bear canister, put my food in it, put it over 100 feet away or whatever they recommend. It just gave me that peace of mind to be able to sleep through the night not thinking that a bear was gonna try to break in my car if it smelt food. I know bears are smart enough to break into cars. That tells me they're smart enough to break into a van or an RV. So please tell me how you think I should secure my food in the van when I'm camping in bear country. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below and I will stop rambling about bears. Other than that, I just have a jug of water up there. I'm not camping here for days. I've been on the road like every single day. So it's really easy as far as food and water to make sure I have just enough to get myself through the night and the morning. And then I trek on and I can get more food along the way. So I also have these window shades that I put over the door so that no bugs can get in. And I also have a little bit of airflow. Voila. I didn't mention that this mattress down here is a three inch foam mattress from Airlax. Um, I got it when I was car camping a lot in Washington and it is actually like super comfortable. Also, I feel like I should mention my roof rack is from Baja Rack. I believe they're made in San Diego and they fit a bunch of different SUVs and trucks, I believe. You can also purchase mounts for a spare tire, uh, gas canisters, you can mount bike racks on top of them. Super convenient, very nice looking. I think that's honestly the reason I went with this roof rack versus a generic one that you can strap to like the two rails. I just think this looks a lot cleaner. There's no drilling involved. 
you basically just take the two thingies off that I can't remember what they're called and you screw it in. I didn't do it. Why do you guys think I'm having a van built and I'm not doing it myself? I feel like that wraps it up. Uh, once again, I'm sorry I'm not in the van yet. Don't get mad at me. Don't yell at me. I wish I were in the van right now. You know how nice this would be if I had a kitchen and a bathroom and water tanks and all of the things. This has actually been really good preparation for van life because I'm kind of like rough in it right now <laughs> compared to how I'm about to be living. And I'm also getting experience finding free parking and campsites on the fly. I haven't really planned this trip out very well. I'm just rolling with the punches and finding a place to stay every night. Thank you guys for hanging in there during my awkward in-between rigs stage. I have hated it much more than you have, I promise. I haven't hated it. It's been a really good perspective. It's kind of taught me how much I really, truly want to be on the road. I want to be living in an RV. I'm not super happy in a stationary house, and so it's going to make me appreciate the van that much more. I can't wait. This is, ah! I can't believe it's less than a week from today. Whew. I promise the next long form YouTube video, I will be in my van. Mark my word. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.